So you're gonna play bard, the charismatic, animatic, ecstatic, fanatic, diplomatic, dramatic, put those lunches super tired, pragmatic. You've been magical since birth. You give your companions a sense of self-worth. Every skill in the book is yours. You've got the road down on all fours. Ooh, Jack. Master of none. If only the party would use your inspiration. A d6, add it to your roll. No thanks, I've got a healing scroll. Don't worry, I'll counter charm. Hey, don't worry, this guy isn't any harm. Sometimes you feel useless. <laughs> like everyone's laughing at you. But I'll tell ya you're clueless Because you're not a cleric And you're far from a barbarian You take all the glasses And you mix them into one Don't thread your songs And words are Shakespearean And you This barely scratched the surface cause we've only just begun. Bards are notoriously one of the most annoying classes to play in Dungeons and Dragons. At level 1 you get Bardic Inspiration and SPELL CASTING! Bardic Inspiration is a neat little tool that you can use to give your companions a bit of an edge in combat. It's incredibly helpful and used in almost every circumstance. Wow. Fighting a lich and someone's about to die, here's a d6 to help with those con saves. Want to hit that final attack? Give that fighter a d6 and add his attack. What an amazing ability that is so useful and amazing for bards to have. Alright, Moose Jock, make your attack. Oh, you can add a bardic inspiration if you want. You, uh, because I gave it to you last round. Uh, am I fine? You needed a 9. Okay, I, I'm sorry, I'm fine. Okay, alright, yeah, whatever. Uh, you trigger the tripwire and a pit opens up. Make a dex save. Alright. Oh, uh, add a 4 to your roll. It's a Bardic Inspiration. I gave it to you last turn. I got a 27, so I think I'm okay. Alright. All around me are familiar faces. Spellcasting, the bard's bread and butter. How the heck do spells work, Jacob? You ask? Well, I say in a condescending tone, get good and read the book, you freaking lollygagger. Uh, we can't do that. We have to actually explain it. Uh, okay, fine. But I'm going to do it in the form of a song. No, 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 no. Pick some cantrips. Pick a level one spell. And cast them with your spell slots, except for cantrips, they are cast at will. If you can't understand this, then you must be illiterate. However, bard spells are different than the other classes. As a bard, your spells don't necessarily have to do with attacking and doing damage, but are more area effects and crowd control. You can single out a target to incapacitate them, or rupture the earth with a bass drop. Either way, don't count on blasting fireballs with those bongos. You're one of the few support classes in D&D, so know that before going into the class. A greeting, stranger. Would you like to hear a tale? Uh, sure, sure, why not? Level 2! You get Jack of All Trades. Anything you can do, I can do better. I can do anything better than you. Oh, you can. Yes, I can. Oh, you can. Yes, I can. Oh, you can. Yes, I can. Yes, I can. You get to put half of your proficiency bonus into unproficient skills, meaning you'll have about zero negatives in all your skills. Song of Rest, also achieved at level 2. When your party takes that ever so needed short rest from fighting those dastardly villains, and some people have taken some damage, you're there to lighten their spirits and continue forward on the journey by healing everyone with a small little song of rest. Alright, we're gonna take a short rest. Okay. Oh, you guys can add uh, four hit points from my song of rest. Well, All right, full. Yeah, this 13 heals me. Yeah, me too. Alright. Worn out places. Worn out places. <laughs> Third level! Bard College! There are two bard 
colleges in this here mighty fine player's handbook, and three in Xanathar's Guide. Bards of Lore are masters of knowledge and information. You can use your inspiration to attack enemies and leave them hating themselves. Haha! -ha! Get him, he's almost dead! Your stinky poo poo face. Bards of lore use their abilities to further their ways into politics and people. Manipulation is their key, and knowledge is power. Also, if you pick the college, you're probably a prick, because who else wants to play Littlefinger with Thunderwave in Liamin's tiny hut? Bards of Valor are battle bards. They use their inspiration to increase damage and armor class. <laughs> On others, not you. <laughs> Fuck you. They inspire those in combat with the beating rhythms of battle. Bard, help us! Bards of Glamour are bards that are mantles of beauty and awe. They can give their allies temporary hit points and charm others. Bards of Swords are the fighter bards. Not to be confused with Bards of Valor. These bards are just the better Bards of Valor. You get it? It's just... it. They realized how horrible this one is and they just made a new- You understand. They can use weapons magnificently and gain attacking styles and techniques to use in combat. I honestly think this bard subclass is the best. You can expend bardic inspirations to defend, deal damage, or move targets. It's awesome. Bards of Whispers are the secretive, dastardly, power-hungry bards who can deal psychic damage and frighten others. Oh yeah, I'm playing a wizard, I get a high spell attack bonus, it's awesome. That's awesome, man. <clears throat> oh, uh, I'm, uh, I'm playing a- I'm actually playing a bard? Why? Yeah. <laughs> like, they kind of suck. But I'm- I'm playing a-, a co the College of, of Whispers, though, so it's cool. You're just- you're just a worse rogue. Hey, shut the fuck up! <laughs> Level 6, Counter Charm. You can use your action to start performing a song to give all those within 30 feet of you advantage on saves against being charmed or frightened. Which is amazing, because you, you can save your party members from certain- Alright, you enter the chamber of the sleeping dragon. We need to be really quiet in here and like not become frightened of him. Oh, okay, uh, I pull out my guitar and I start doing counter charm. Dude. Why? Like, well, I, be quiet. I didn't know. The I mean, dragon wakes up and yeah. he attacks. Dang it! This is such a crappy ability, mainly due to the fact that you have to use an action to start using this ability. Sure, there's no limit on how often you can use it, but the fact that it's an action makes this ability horrible. By the time you say, hey, I'll use counter charm, the person has already been charmed, because how in all fuck are you supposed to know when someone is going to be charmed or frightened? You could say, well, Jacob, every turn you can retry your frightened saves or charm saves, and the bard can give advantage on that. Yeah, sure, that works for frighten effects, but being frightened means you won't get any closer to the enemy, but the range on counter charm is only 30 feet, meaning the bard has to stay behind to help the one guy who's frightened by spending an action and wasting his turn doing so, just so he can have advantage on the roll. It would literally be better if you just gave him a bardic inspiration. That's a bonus action and it adds more to the roll. All right, since this is already a tangent, I might as well just finish it. Paladins get an ability called Aura of Protection and Aura of Courage. If you are within 10 feet of the Paladin, you gain a bonus to your saves that is equal to their charisma. And you cannot be frightened at all. No advantage, no little uh, about it. No, nothing. You cannot be frightened if you are within 10 feet of the Paladin. And it increases to 30 feet at level 18. This is so much better in comparison to Counter Charm. If we really want a bard to be a support class, make them feel like a support style class and not a wannabe spell sword cleric rogue. I'm going to recommend to all you dungeon masters out there to homebrew this rule into your game just to make bards feel a little bit more special and a little bit more awesome. Level 10, Magical Secrets. Alright, now we're getting to the good stuff. Now that we're out of those crummy levels 1 through 10, we're gonna finally get some of these awesome abilities. Magical Secrets lets you get two new spells from other classes. Yeah, yeah, okay, it's it's pretty cool. You can get some interesting spells like Fireball or, or like Big B's Hand. It still, it still feels like I'm just taken from other classes and I'm not really anything special of my own, but it's fine, it's whatever, it's cool. Alright, next ability. And level 20. No abilities. Just a 
just your just your subclass gets a little ability. This is mostly to compensate for the fact that you get spells. You also get an ability with your subclass, which is also pretty cool too. Now, there are a lot of bard spells, and I can't go over all of them, but we will give some honorable mentions to some of my favorite spells that are taking up most of your class from levels 10 through 20. Thunderclap. Thunder Wave. Vicious Mockery. Hideous Laughter. Liamon's Tiny Hut. Otto's Irresistible Dance. Power Word Kill. Power Word Kill? What the hell? Lich Bard. And now, for the moment you've all been waiting for, our finale of tonight's evening, the level 20 ability. The level 20 ability is Superior Inspiration. At 20th level, when you roll initiative and you have no uses of Bardic Inspiration left, you regain one use. 